Um, so my name is Christian Muntes. I'm, a, I'm a, comes from the other end of the university campus, from the uh, Faculty of Humanities and the Philosophy Department there, or Philosophy and Linguistics Theory of Science. And I work in the Center for Antibiotic Resistance Research uh, within uh, the part that is with social science and, and uh, humanistic aspects of this problem. And uh, especially I work with ethics because I'm a moral philosopher, so that's what I do. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So the, the ethics and value challenges that connect to uh, the problem of antibiotics resistance. And you might wonder then why should you talk about that at all? Uh, isn't it, you know, get on it, solve the problem, everybody recognizes the problem, fix it. We need what is to be done, it's just, you know, getting people on the wagon to do it. And I will try to illustrate for you, it's not so easy uh, as that. Um, it would have been nice if it had been. And I will describe a little bit then uh, in what way that uh, ethics is relevant for, for this problem, uh, for understanding it and for solving it. I will also describe some details of challenges and problems that come in, and I will do this a little bit in parts. So we have uh, a question of why we should care about this. Well, the starting point, I think, is this idea that we need to do something. So just not wait for it to fix itself. We need to do something. And whenever we need to do something uh, with human beings, usually what happens is that we want to do several things to fix the problem, but we can't do all of these things. They will run counter to each other, and they will conflict. And this is what happens in this area. So when you look at the kind of ideas that you find in uh, uh, the mission then to, to fight antibiotic resistance or to deal with it and manage it well, uh, they are in potential conflicts, the aims of this idea. So we heard before in, in other speakers here that we want to speed up innovation, especially of new antibiotic drugs, but also of other kind of technologies to be able to diagnose diseases better and select the ones that need antibiotic from those that don't need an antibiotic and things like that. So that's, a, that's a, and we need to have it quicker. Uh, that's one part of it. But we also want us not to use these drugs as much as before, to be much more conservative and rational in the use of antibiotics, what usually call antibiotic stewardship with their programs. And this is both the human and the animal use area. We also want to control resistant infections and the way that they transmit and spread into the environment. And, we, and that, including in that is also that we want to control the spread of resistant genes uh, between bacteria, for instance. And we want to fight emissions of antibiotics into the environment, both from our consumption and from the production of antibiotics, in order not to create so, such a strong selection pressure for resistant bacteria. All of this we want to do, but you can easily understand that these aims conflict with each other. So we want more new drugs faster. At the same time, we want to consume these drugs much less than before. You can easily see the problem here that if the main production of new drugs is driven by a commercial company, which is done today, these companies will be much less interested to produce new drug if we at the same time say basically, I won't take it. Uh, or <clears throat> if you want to find environmental drug emissions and for example set up systems so that we punish drug makers where you have environmental problems, for instance, then of course the price of this drug goes up, and then again you will have a reluctance to buy it, and then again you won't really fix the problem. Uh, <clears throat> if you want to control consumption, then of course 
the whole idea with fighting antibiotic resistance is that we want to preserve the effectiveness of healthcare, but of course, if we don't treat infections as much as before, we get less healthcare for what we do. So all of these things can pull in different directions, and all of these aims can actually also come into conflict with each other. So that's sort of where ethics starts, right? So it's the realization that all actions that you're contemplating means that, okay, you can win something, but you will also have to give up something. And the ethical question is, what wins or worth what you have to give up in order to get it. So balancing the pros and the cons, that's what ethics is basically about, and how much then. Another side of this is that also ethics is crucial for responding to drug resistance as a problem. And here are some uh, illustrations that, for example, so using antibiotics a lot, and, and you know, using it uh, preventively, for instance, prophylactically, increases the pressure that drives the resistance problem. It, it gives more antibiotics out in the environment. At the same time, we know that there are large parts of the world where you don't have as well-ordered, rich, and stable societies as we are. So we can be safe from a lot of infections just because we have very well-built and rich societies. We don't, but in other parts of the world, it's much different. So here is a case, it's an article from just a few years ago, where you could very effectively get child mortality down by using antibiotics a lot, almost in the way that is used in the animal industry in some way, almost that you're spraying uh, with antibiotics, because there is nothing else. So you get child mortality, so you have a lot of infection in these in this societies. You have no protection against it. Nutrition is bad. Everything is bad. So then this becomes effective. This means that if you abstain from using antibiotics as much in this context, the price is paid in dead children. So here you go. You see very clearly that in order to reach one aim, you have to pay a price with the other hand. And the ethical question is, of course, OK, so what is the appropriate balance here when you need to balance these things? And uh, here's a re very recent article that addresses this question in different international contexts. Because then depending on how you value what's at stake, uh, against each other, you will reach different conclusions. So depending on what your ethical outlook is, you will here come with, the ad, with another answer than if you had another outlook. And it could also be that you have the same outlook, but you make uh, your assessment from a different context. Do you make it from a sub-Saharan African context or from a North European context? This will make a huge difference to how you value the options. Uh, <clears throat> so, and this, of course, will also affect how we can expect people to respond to different suggestions of what to do to handle this problem. And I will come back to that.